was seen in 60 different countries by over 200 million people. It was a global birthday greeting to a man who was serving life imprisonment for preparing to overthrow the apartheid state. Campaigning for the release of political prisoners is not unusual for people like Jerry Dammers and Jim Kerr. Jerry Dammers in England organized the Artists Against Apartheid group, and Jim Kerr and Simple Minds spent a world tour campaigning for Amnesty International. The Freedom at 70 concert boasted no Geldof-like figure in the absence of Nelson Mandela himself, but Simple Minds was the first band to commit, and Jim Kerr became a solid sphere involvement on such a scale now. Um. Essentially, I think uh, this time last year, I was in London doing uh, a series of, of uh, things for uh, a live album. And one one journalist I came across, it was a particularly good interview because it got all kind of heated. And during the course of the the interview, I, we touched on Amnesty International and you know our involvement in that and the whole thing with the political prisoners. And I guess I had happened to say uh, off the cuff that I, I felt Mandela kind of uh, symbolized all of, uh, all of the political prisoners, although he himself probably wouldn't want to be singled out. I, I, I had said that there's a journalist passed that on to Jerry Dammers, a person I had never met, but I had a lot of respect for him. And he was on about putting on a concert at Wembley. This was in June last year. He was talking about putting on an anti-apartheid concert um, for September, essentially three months later. And although uh, I liked his, you know, courage, he, he sounded nervous and he sounded a wee bit out of his depth. I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying that. Too bad if he does. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, I met him and he got going and stuff and I said, it's crazy, you know, because all he had was the idea. He didn't even have a promoter at the time or anything. So he came back about, about to November. He had a promoter in this guy called Tony, uh, Tony Hollingsworth, who had all the experience of the big C&D festivals we have commit ourselves. And also Ed Becknell, who manages Dire Straits, had some rumblings of what was going on. He got in touch with uh, our manager and said if Simple Minds to commit dire straits, well then I guess that was, uh, you know, the cornerstone of uh, the event. <laughs> to suppose that Jerry Dammers was out of his depth. In 1986, Jerry organized the successful Freedom Beat concert in London. It featured name artists and attracted half a million people, but it lost the anti-apartheid movement approximately 70,000 pounds. The Freedom at 70 concert for Nelson Mandela was also not without hitches. There's been pressure on the BBC in this country who are showing the whole of the, uh, the event. And their pressure has come from the South African government, who've said, how can they support an event which is supporting an organization which has not given up, revoked violence, and so on, and all of that sort of thing. Now, it's a sort of outrageous attempt to interfere with what the BBC do in this country, and it won't... Su the research I've done, even if they did, uh, did pull it, they're already under contract that everywhere else in the world has to get it. So we wouldn't get it in England, but... Maybe that would be a good thing as well. It, it, it caused a little stir. Mm. Um, and as I've heard, yeah, there's delays and this and that. There's a seven second delay to stop people. I mean, what country is this? Mm. Is this Russia or what? I mean, I, I, what are they so, so afraid of? None of them have bothered, you know, they, I think this propaganda as well trying to make us, but none of them have even bothered to check out the songs or the lyrics. And if they did, they would, I'm sure they would find no talk of terrorism or uprising or the bloody revolutions or anything um, like that but I'll be very aware on stage I'll leave my soapbox at home but I'll be very aware that there's a kind of golden opportunity here and I'm not going to let it pass me by <laughs>
10, 15, 20 years time, I don't know how long it will take, but when we look back and see the, um, the footage of what's going on in South Africa, I hope, pray that it's no longer what's going on. I think it's going to seem as banal as when you see a footage from a Europe in 1945 or whatever. I think it's going to, and when you see that now, you think, what? What? All that house switch and all that stuff? What did people do? What did the international community, well, I mean, what did you do? And it's important to me when, when I see that, that even more important to me because I have a microphone, I had the chance to say something. It's important that uh, I voiced my protest. Held behind four walls all through nights and days. From the ones outside to the one inside, we said, Oh, 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 Mandela Cruz. 